Hi, I am Marus Peters and in this very brief video I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Monod Kinetics, which is still the most commonly used model uh, to predict microorganism growth. Now the Monod uh, equation is an empirical mathematical model and this was named after a French scientist who won the Nobel uh, Prize in medicine in 1965. So if you've seen Michaelis Menten Kinetics, you will see that this model actually uh, bears a lot of similarities uh, between how you compare um, this microorganism growth with a system that looks at enzymes. But to understand this, we first need to have a look at the different stages of microorganism growth. And in general, people tend to say there are four different stages. So if you look at the graph, you can see in the first instance that nothing is really growing. Then you uh, go into a phase, so the first stage we call the, the lag phase, the log phase, where you see an exponential growth in the number of cells or bacterial cells. Now, the most important stage that we'll be looking at, particularly uh, for this equation, is the stationary phase. And in this phase, there is a nice balance uh, between the rate of cells that are dividing, so essentially those uh, that are alive, and the rate of the cells that are dying. So it should be roughly equal around that stage. So then we can talk about this balanced growth. Now, inherently, when you work with microorganisms one way or the other, uh, particularly when you look at bioreactors, they might not always have access to oxygen or the nutrients run out. This is also it's followed with a death or decline phase uh, where you see an exponential decrease in the number of living bacterial cells. So these are the general uh, stages that we're looking at. And if we want uh, to model this microorganism growth, this monad kinetics or the monad equation tends to be quite often used. And here you can see the general equations where you might recognize from Michaelis mental kinetics as this is type of K factor, so a kind of factor, which is a half velocity constant. And this is the value uh, of when, um, when you look at uh, the substrate concentration, when this is about half of mu divided over mu max. Now the mu stands for the specific growth of the microorganisms. And then we look at, uh, there is a maximum, uh, obviously a maximum growth rate. And the S is the concentration of limiting substrate. And the nutrients that we generally use could be carbon sources, it could be sugars. So it's something that the microorganisms really need to grow. Now, in general, in monad kinetics, you will only see that there's one limiting substrate, um, which is obviously in real life uh, not necessarily the case because you might want to use different types of nutrients. Um, but there are ways of how you can correct for that. So the equation that you see in the right uh, will take into consideration two different nutrients. Now, as always in chemical engineering, in order to uh, have these equations, there's a number of assumptions that we need to make. Uh, and this is not the only model um, that looks at microorganism growth. And there's quite a few other ones that have been refined. But here, I think the, the graph really nicely shows what's the main difference uh, between a couple of very common models. So if you look at monad kinetics, one of the main things that you can see is that depending on the substrate concentration, the, the normalized specific growth rate will always increase. And I think inherently when you think about it, you know, and even this when you look at enzymes, the more you tend to get of it, there's always some kind of inherent inhibition. Um, so there are some other models like Haldane Andres and Han Levenspiel who take this inhibition into account. And this is where it comes to the main assumptions that you're making in monad kinetics. There's a few more, but you have to assume that your growth is balanced. So this is where I was uh, showing um, the different stages of, of the division, which is important. So you need to be like in a very specific range. Uh, you're not really considering inhibition, uh, which is always tends to happen. And this very much depends on also, for instance, pH and temperature, um, but also consider that per cell line that you're using or per bacteria, that this monokinetics model will give you very different results. Another assumption that you might want to look into um, in general, in bioreactors, you tend um, to do things in liquid. Um, so if you look at water, then you are just looking at a standard Newtonian fluid. However, there are quite a few systems where this is not necessarily the case, um, particularly if you work with slightly more viscous systems where you can also have diffusion starts to play a role. 
Uh, and uh, a well-known example of this is, for instance, in xanthine gums, which is a very viscous solution. So these are just some key assumptions that you're making. So bearing in mind that if you're not working exactly under these conditions, that you might have to kind of readjust your values somewhat. Now, now we actually know um, how um, this uh, how this growth works. Let's have a look at some of the mole and the mass balances, and we'll focus here on both the substrate, so S, uh, but also on the biomass, which is X. And I will show you the examples of how this works. Uh, but bearing in mind this is particularly for a continuous third tank reactor. So we have something going in and something going out. Um, if you are working with a batch reactor, you would look at a slightly different process. And one thing to consider is that when you're doing this, um, that it's not just, it depends on how you're doing it. So if you're just interested in, for instance, you have yeast and you're just, your final product is the yeast and your yeast is growing, then this is somewhat different. But more often than not, you're not necessarily so much interested in your microorganism that is growing, but in what your microorganism is actually producing. Uh, so the second day uh, product of the metabolite. And this can kind of change uh, the way you do this somewhat as well. Now, bearing in mind, if we look at, we have different R values, so you can say Rx, uh, if we assume X is the biomass, so the rate of the biomass formation. So that's equal to the yield coefficient, so that's what you're producing. Uh, times Rs minus Kd, so here we're looking at this kind of uh, the def, uh, a kind of a, t a type of K which takes into account the death rates on the cell, times X is the biomass. Now, and this rate of substrate utilization is Rs, and if you would divide this over X, this actually refers back to this mu to this specific growth rate. So this is how your monokinetics linked in with this particular uh, equation. So, and here is what I said it was different. So you would have the biomass that you're looking at, but also the Y can be something else that you're producing. So not necessarily biomass per se. So not necessarily the yeast or the bacteria that you're looking at, but also your product formation. So then if we consider, and here we have to make the, the, the assumption that nothing is accumulating. So we say uh, the, that this comes down to zero. So there's now additional mass. These are some of the general uh, mass balances that you can set up where you consider the flow that goes in, the substrate in, the substrate going out, uh, and then also how much is being used. So this is this uh, rate of the substrate utilization times the volume. Now, again, if we want to look at uh, the, the mass balance on X, so this is on the biomass, we presume that in total um, there's no accumulation either, so this should be zero. Uh, and here you will see that this uh, comes in, uh, we have um, biomass in, biomass going out, we also have substrate going in, substrate going out. Q stands here for um, the flow that comes in. And the Y again is this yield coefficient, so whatever you're producing. And then you also consider that besides that, so besides biomass going in and out, substrate going in and out, there's also an element of this uh, death rate of your biomass. So you need to consider that as well. So if you consider Q and V, you can also get an idea of the retention time, which is very important to know. So if you want to look at this, for instance, in batch reactors and bearing in mind here, I specifically said your biomass is going in and out. You have substrate going in and out. This is not the case um, for a batch reactor. So you would have a slight modification uh, of these equations. Now your KS here depends on whatever cell line you're working with or whatever bacteria. So you need to get this value somewhere from literature. And then some of these other values, you should also be able to find some information on it to get an idea of what's happening. So the KD value is again, is something that's specific for the cell line that you're working with. Now, these equations are not necessarily easy to solve. So imagine we have the substrate, we have the biomass, and for instance, if you look at a system where you're producing biomethane, you would also need to do a separate, um, so here I talk about one of these uh, secondary products or metabolic product. So if you're producing a pharmaceutical, or as I said, as you're producing, for instance, biomethane as a gas, you would need to have a separate mass balance uh, that looks at the product that you're producing. So you would come in with an extra term there as well. Now, you can solve these terms in MATLAB if you uh, make some assumptions. 
about what's going in and what's going out. And obviously, in a lot of the cases, you start with a known concentration of bacteria. So you kind of know what kind of X value you start with. But only if you assume that we're at the maximum growth rate, you can solve these equations easily by hand. So what I'll do in the next slide, I'll give you like a quick example of that. Um, so if you're looking at things at designing your reactor, these are the equations that you'll be working with for a CSTR. But if you are under the assumption that uh, we are just, you just are presented with some data, you get given the time uh, and you know what kind of the biomass concentration is, and we assume there's maximum growth, so there's no inhibition, then using some differential equations, you should be able um, to make out what the maximum growth rate is. Okay, so you should be able to do this by yourself. Now, this is a very kind of short whistle-stop store on how you can get your mole and your mass balances for monod kinetics, under which uh, circumstances you can use this, and also when you might want to consider a couple of, a couple of other equations, for instance, if you look at uh, processes where inhibition becomes important.